morning, and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so honored to be here. For the past 30 years, I've called Kibbutz Nir Oz in the Western Negev my home. My three children, Ofri, Neta, and Aya, were born on the kibbutz, and they were raised there as well, and so was my husband, Aviv. Aviv was killed on October 7th, doing everything in his power to save our lives and our home. On that terrible day, I was taken hostage by Hamas and spent 54 days in captivity. During that time, I worried constantly about my family. I didn't know what had happened to them. And like Ora, the protagonist of David Grossman's novel, To the End of the Land, I felt that talking about them would somehow keep them safe. So I spoke about them all the time, and luckily it worked. They're fine. I also had time and was able to reflect on my life and on the things that are most important to me. My work as a teacher at Nofe Absor, the regional high school that for the past 20 years has been an outlet for my professional and creative energy. My community, Nir Oz, that I feel so very lucky to be a part of. And my work as an educational guide at Yad Vashem. Time that has passed since I've gotten back hasn't made things easier. If anything, it's become harder to grasp what happened and to process the feelings of terror and helplessness that I felt during the attack and afterwards while being held captive. I have a very vivid memory of being driven around the kibbutz, seeing my home, and when I say home, I don't just mean my house, but the whole kibbutz destroyed. At some point, we passed a Hamas terrorist standing in the middle of the road. Behind them, there was a cypress tree going up in flames. And for me, that image represents the tragedy of my kibbutz. My personal tragedy, the loss of Aviv, and the hardship that my children had to endure, and the disintegration of our community are all enmeshed. The Eshkol region, which Nir Oz belongs to, is still the home of a thriving and vibrant community. We lost so much on October 7th, it's even difficult to try to describe. I think that as a community, though, our greatest loss is the loss of our conviction that our lives on the Gaza border have meaning, not just for us, but for Israeli society as a whole. During my time in captivity, I made a decision then that when I came home and I knew I would come home, I would do everything that I could to contribute to rebuilding, rebuilding the kibbutz, rebuilding Eshkol, and everything else. And this decision, along with the hope that somehow my family had survived and that I would be back in time to celebrate my students' graduation and that I still had a community to belong to, gave me the strength that I needed to get through those long, long days. I've gone back to teaching and I've resumed my work at Yad Vashem. And this is very important for my personal healing. But I also believe that the next generation of Israelis need the conviction that there is hope for a better future. Everybody's talking about hope today. Um, so I really do believe that there is hope for a better future for this country and for the whole region, that there can be an end to war and bloodshed. The next generation also needs tools to find ways to be a constructive part of this future. And if I can make even a small contribution to that, then I see it as my duty to do so. Another thing that's very, very important to me is the rebuilding of Nir Oz. It's not easy. People are scared and angry. Many feel that we were abandoned on October 7th. Many, many of our friends and relatives are still being held hostage by Hamas. And our community can't heal fully before we know what happened to them. And we're waiting for them to come back. Um, we're living in Kiryat Gat now. And we're very, very thankful to have new houses. And I'm saying houses on purpose. We're overwhelmed by the kindness and the hospitality of our neighbors, our new neighbors. But for many, it doesn't feel like home without the fields and the beautiful sunsets of the Negev. Aviv loved the Negev 
He enjoyed seeing seeds that he sowed, and I'd like to say with his own hands, but it doesn't work like that anymore. And he loved to see them grow and ripen. He was fascinated by big machines, and he took great pride in being able to sol solve technical problems. Aviv was also an artist, and his work conveys a unique ability to observe the natural landscape together with our agricultural way of life. Aviv used to say he was an inf infantry soldier in the army. So he used to say that a good, a good soldier picks his head up, looks around, understands what needs to be done, and goes ahead and does it without asking too many questions. And my children have internalized this, and each one of them is doing their best to live up to Aviv's legacy. Ofri has gone back to near Oz, and he's working on the farm on the kibbutz. Um, during the time that New Oz members were evacuated to Eilat, Netta started volunteering at the Inter-University Institute for Marine Sciences. That's a long one. He's now working there full-time as a research assistant. Um, in August, Aya started a year of volunteer work on Kibbutz Lotan in the Arava. And the whole time that I was away, she continued her work there. And she's still there working in the date groves of the Arava. I'm so proud of them, and I know that Aviv is too, wherever he is. Unfortunately, I'm going to finish on a bittersweet note. There are days that the burden of October 7th and the aftermath are almost unbearable, and I look around and see a broken community. On those days, it's really hard to imagine a future for us together. But on other days, I see and feel the connection and the special bond that the people of Nir Oz and Eshkol share. And I truly believe that we're the salt of the earth and that we'll find the strength to rebuild our lives and our community. And hopefully, as time goes by, the days of hope will outnumber the days of doubt. Thank you so much.